Welcome back to the 19th of remaking Hotline Miami in Game Maker Studio and today we're gonna do the throwing part so basically we throw our weapon and at some point it sticks to the wall and this is the definition of a collision because what we're doing uh, we are throwing and at some point we don't want our weapons to go through something so therefore we're checking for collisions and boom if we're having one stay there so don't go out in the wilderness of course if we are throwing then it will clip a little bit because little debug function which i'm showing you these are actually their collision boxes or collision mask if you want to say call that like this doesn't really matter it's basically the same i'm going to show you a few tweaks around that why this should be actually an issue and how we can circumvent it and then i guess we will follow by two other videos one will be a game and then the other one making a uh, a program in game maker studio which is possible but there are some let's call it limitations in this kind of regard i'm not going to show which one i'm going to do next but uh, they are i guess sure so without further ado this is one up indie i am a developer so if you like what you're seeing hey why not consider subscribing sharing and liking that would be amazing so let's dive right into our own project so our hotline clone and here um, everything is set up the way it is so there are no new things so, so basically we are here at our position we can th shoot throw and we already set everything up which we wanted and now we come up for the collision part so therefore we just create a nice little sprite which is going to be super um, important so we call that a wall and well let's make this as easy as possible so let's uh, set it up by let's go 16 by 16 of course you can go with different kind of metrics boom and then we fill it up with one color let's go with a very neat one mm, let's go with orange boom and then this area we're gonna fill up with a little darker orange so here we go and therefore it looks nice and then of course we're gonna create our object wall which is gonna have this texture and then, then we're just gonna plant it everywhere there are different kind of ways how you can set up your collision system so for example one way is for example in your room do it with tile sets so this is the left side this is a way to do it or you can do it with instances so basically objects which, so basically you're just having putting instances and plant them around this is what i'm gonna do for that i'm gonna create a new layer which i'm called instances walls or whatever and then boom we're gonna put that in of course uh, let's make the restriction a little lighter so eight by eight as a grid there you go much nicer and then of course we can just stretch these things because their collision mask will stretch with them because well their collision mask is basically the same as like the the stuff which you're seeing on the outside so basically this is our collision easy peasy stuff so basically as you can see i'm just making this ultra quick and we can stretch them and the collision will still be good as new so so there's basically no change here boom boom and as you can see not much work to do and we already have everything set up which we want of course the last one what you can actually do is besides having tile set collisions and the instance object collisions you can actually have do this on polygons and this is the fastest one a little bit more complicated so therefore we're not going to do this in here of course the possibility is there and the polygonal um, collision is the fastest one of all of them so this one is pretty sweet but of course it comes with some limitations also but for the speed i guess this one is the the best one so the polygon one. Oh, did i forget one yes i did as you can see i have everything in there and of course normally what you do you just set it to invisible so you don't see it but for now eh we want to do so let's say for example we have our player and then he's throwing the weapon and of course when you throw it then there is where are you there is for example our step event and it says like hey once the speed is running out then we destroy the instance and then of course we create our object pickup so if you don't remember this was 
I'm not sure, a few videos ago in the series. So now we can actually recycle that part. We just go and set up a collision. With whom? With the object wall. Boom. And then we basically do the same. We destroy it and of course we create and pass in the ammunition. So this is the only thing which has changed. But we come to a little issue. For example, let's say we have a small weapon and we throw it. Boom. No. Yeah. <laughs> As you can see now it sticks this is not an issue but let's say you have such a small thing uh, like a big thing and then throwing it may cause you some issues so for example you want to throw it through here and you always have a chance because this thing is rotating you will never get it through the door even though for example it should do so therefore a little circumvention of course you don't have to do this but what i do i just have for example a little extra thing which I would call then, I don't know, make a sprite, call it SPR mask. And then of course you can call it diff different kind of mask, but let's say, let's just call it object mask and uh, do this uh, 16 by 16 also. This will be a dummy, which you don't see normally. So let's go and fill it up with, I don't know, the red color. Come on, here we go. And center it in the middle because the object weapon sprites are centered in the middle also and then for example we go into our object throw and normally the collision is then set to the same as the sprite we're gonna change that we just go and assign a different so basically it will draw the sprite as normal so the one which we are assigning it to but the collision will be on a different sprite which is then a little bit more handy so basically all the weapons which are being here, have the same collision mask, so they feel kind of the same, and then you don't have issues where things are getting stuck because the collision mask is quite small. So here, this is what we're gonna do, and of course, for now, we cannot see this, so therefore, we're gonna make a little draw event. You don't have to do this, this is of course for us just debugging. So let's say our object control, and then we had to debug variable in there so we just say hey is this true uh, come on come on let's make this happen that if this is true then we want to do a few things first of all we want to draw uh, over that draw self so basically we are drawing ourself here we go no not like this uh, we want to draw ourself and here we want to draw something which is our collision mask or our sprite mask or whatever you want to call that and this is actually uh, kind of easy to grab so here let's so you see the tooltip so we need to input the sprite and here we just say mask index here we go boom of course this will throw an error if there is no mask assigned so here just be uh, warned so here zero and then x and y and now for example once for example we are well having our debug mode in official on we will see for example then if we are throwing we are having a different kind of mask and therefore it's a little bit difficult to see but um, you have something in the background of course you can do the same stuff for the object pickup here it doesn't really matter in my opinion but just to see that that this doesn't work <laughs> because as you can see now ooh, it's trying to draw that we have to assign it the same so our mask also as a collision mask as you can see this stuff is kind of sensitive in this kind of regard alrighty and now as you can see our debug mode is off and we don't see it but the debug mod mode is on and for example if I'm just uh, something like here and I'm pressing my right mouse button it doesn't work because the collision mask is around here and then now I have it equipped. Of course, this is a little stupid. So basically the collision mask for the pickup weapon shouldn't be on this mask. But for example, if you want to unify it, then this is the way to go. Just as a little reminder, of course, for the pickup weapons here, it doesn't really make any sense because the mask should be big on and should be as big as the weapon it self and then of course what you can do is define it by yourself this is another way how you can control that but doing this for every weapon 
yeah, you can do this. So here, for example, you go on the collision mask and then normally it's automatic. So basically it's trying to grab all the pixels and therefore you could do this. Or for example, you can just go full image or go manual and then boom, you can have a different kind of mask if you like. And now you see, uh -huh, this is actually the outline of the sprite. So here you can change it. But for example, a lot of times games do that with the artificial mask and then therefore you have no clipping issues later on. For example, let's say we have a dude running around and then he has a different kind of animation and his bounding box, his mask changes because it's bound to the sprite. And then for example, normally when you are not walking, when you have, when you just change the animation, you could go, go on, let's get stuck. You could, for example, go get stuck with this dude. Uh, while animation uh, changing. So this is what you do. I see a lot of times in tutorials like and then he's getting stuck like I cannot get out, but not an issue because hey, this is being resolved by having a collision mask for all the relevant collisions. And therefore we're going to apply that stuff, which as you can see, I'm taking a little bit of time, but this is kind of important to understand that the collision mask is and then a useful tool, not just for the throw weapons, but of course for our player also. Alrighty, so we are off here and well, uh, have a good one. One up indie for the next tutorial. Bye bye.